So you're thinking about making the move to Washington, D.C., and you've got a few questions. You're wondering if it's going to be the right move for you. Well, today we're going to go over the pros and cons of living in D.C. Now, if this is your first time visiting this channel and you're interested in moving to D.C. or the surrounding areas, you can reach us in the description box below. You can shoot us a text, give us a phone call, send us an email, or we can do a Zoom to get the conversation started. As a small disclaimer, I am a little bit biased on this list. I've lived here for over 25 years, so I have more pros than cons on my list, and I think you're going to find it's a pretty great place to live, too. The first pro on my list has got to be the culture. There are just so many neat things to do here. If you're into the uh, arts, we have many theaters, the most prominent being the Kennedy Center. There's also the Warner Theater, the National Theater, um, about a dozen others that uh, I don't need to rattle off here. If uh, you like museums, well, we have the Smithsonian. It's the world's largest museum complex. It's 19 museums as well as the National Zoo. The National Zoo is a big hit if you have kids. There's a giant panda exhibit my kids love. There's a, a primate exhibit, the big cat. There's a reptile uh, facility as well. There's just a lot of things that you can do there. You can spend the entire day there. It's uh, free to go, as all the Smithsonian institutions are. There is parking there. If you do want to park, though, you'll have to pay, but it's just a lot easier if you become a member than your parking's included. Next on my list is diversity. D.C. is truly an international city. There's over 150 languages spoken in D.C., according to the Census Bureau, of which, at home, over a quarter of the households speak a language other than English. Well, what also bleeds into that, then, because there's so many people here, is uh, the restaurant scene. It's amazing. There's Michelin star restaurants. There's any kind of food that you can imagine. If there's a, a type of food that you've been wanting to have, you will find it in DC and it will be amazing. Next on our list is history. You're living in it when you're in DC. You're a part of it. There are many monuments you can see. You can walk easily to the Lincoln Memorial. Jefferson's a bit more of a hike. You can be on the National Mall. Uh, if you're going to a Caps game, you can walk right by the White House. I mean, when does that happen? You know, anywhere else in the country. If there's a march going on, you can see it. You can be a part of it, or you can uh, stay home. If you live here long enough, you're gonna see people in Congress. If you're a name dropper, you can you can t tell all your friends. You're gonna see presidential motorcades. You're gonna see international events. You're gonna experience that all while you live in D.C. It's it's pretty neat. Next on our list is accessibility. It is so easy to get around D.C. You don't need a car. If you have one, that's great. You can park it somewhere, but you don't need it. We have a very expansive metro system here that has buses as well as the train, which we call just metro. There's so many stops that you can get anywhere in D.C. The burbs are a little bit harder to get around. You may want a car for that. But in D.C. itself, you do not need a vehicle. We also have Capital Bike Share, which gets you around on a bike. You just put them in the racks, you know, rent as you go. And uh, the e-scooters, which you can put it pretty much anywhere. They're all over the place. Um, it is just, it's so easy to get around DC. It's not going to be an issue for you. If you don't have a car, don't worry about it. The next one on our list is jobs. DC is a extremely strong job market. There are tons of jobs here, tons of educated workforce here. There are many large employers like Amazon, obviously coming in. There's Raytheon moving headquarters here. There's Boeing in the area. There's a lot of defense contractors. There's obviously the federal government. There's uh, political jobs. A lot of people come here for work. And if you live here long enough, one of the most common things that you're going to encounter when you're interacting with your neighbors or people at a bar or something like that is they're going to say, where are you from originally? It's a very DC thing. For our sixth pro on the list is education. DC is one of the most educated cities in the country. It came in number three, according to Bloomberg, behind San, San Francisco and Seattle for college educated adults living there. Um, on top of that, we, we have a really large presence of colleges and universities here. There are 19 colleges and universities in D.C. Some of the most prominent ones are Georgetown, GW University, American University. Those are all private schools. And you have Howard University as well. The K-12 through system in D.C. is also very expansive. There are public schools as well as charter schools. So if you want your kid to have a Montessori program or anything else like that, there's a lottery system where you can lottery into those schools. There's also language immersion programs. So if you want your kids to learn Spanish, French, even Mandarin, that's a possibility of living in DC. All right, the last pro on the list is weather. DC is very unique in terms of having four unique seasons. Spring here is crisp. We have the Cherry Blossom Festival. It's anywhere between one and two weeks where you can actually see them bloom. The news will track 
for you and tell you how far along with the park service. If you are gonna go down to the cherry blossoms, which I, I highly recommend going to Tidal Basin, I would go earlier in the morning before all the buses show up and it's just you know crowds of people, elbow to elbow. You want a little bit of space, you gotta go first uh, light of dawn. Uh, now summer here, it can be a bit brutal uh, starting around, uh, around July. Uh, if you go to the fireworks on uh, the mall for July 4th, which I do encourage you to do uh, at least one time, that, you know, you're going to camp out there all day and it gets pretty brutally hot uh, in July, which is a lot of people around the 4th of July and they take an entire week off here. It's uh, super easy to get around if you stay in town, but a lot of people like myself go to the beach. My family in Virginia Beach, which is about three and a half, four hour drive. Uh, a lot of uh, other people in D.C. will go to Eastern Shore of Maryland towards Ocean City or Rehoboth Beach in Delaware. Um, those are about two and a half, three hours, depending on the time of day you go. Uh, there's also Cape May, New Jersey, um, which is a, you know, a town that some people go to. That's about three hours away. Um, and if you do stay in D.C., though, there are a lot of water sports you can do. There's paddle boarding. There's kayaking at the Thompson Boat Center. There's um, a lot of activities on the water you can do to stay cool. Uh, but then um, going to fall, fall here is, is perfect, in my opinion. It's, it's kind of like Goldilocks. It's not too hot, not too cold. There's no humidity. Uh, it's just right. Now, there's a lot of fall festivals, a lot of, uh, a lot of farms that people go to that have apple picking and things like that. Uh, and in winter here, winter is um, pretty mild, in my opinion. It does get below freezing. It, you're going to have a few days where it's really cold. You're going to have some snow. Not a ton of snow. So if you're from the Midwest, you're going to, you know, be just fine. You're going to wonder why they're closing down when there's two inches of snow. Uh, it's, it's, it's comical. Uh, there's even local news that'll have a, it'll tell you how many loaves of bread to buy for this snowfall, which is kind of funny uh, when it's only two or three inches of snow, but DC will shut down. It'll shut down at any opportunity it gets when there's bad weather. Uh, so if you work from home, like a lot of people do, it'll, you, you're going to be fine. But uh, just, just be prepared for, if there's bad weather, things to shut down. All right, the first con on the list, I'll just get this out of the way, is traffic. It's a heavily congested city. There's, there's a lot of people that live here, a lot of people that work here that don't live here. There's a lot of people that drive. Uh, the morning commutes usually start around 7 or 8 in the morning with people coming in from everywhere. So if you are going to drive, just be prepared, you know, in your mind. Hey, okay, it's going to take the time it takes to get where I need to go. Have your podcast ready, have your coffee, whatever you need to have, you know, just be in your, you know, frame of mind that it's going to take what it takes to get there. Uh, and just accept that, you know, traffic stinks. It is what it is. There's going to be construction. And, uh, you know, that's just kind of how it is here, unfortunately. Um, now, the uh, afternoon commute, though, it starts around 3.30, 3.30-ish, when uh, federal workers start leaving their, uh, their jobs. All right, the next comment on our list, which you may or may not know about, is uh, DC has no representation. You've probably seen it on uh, license tags, taxation without representation, that's what that means. So there's no one in Congress for DC. There's no one in the House, there's no one in the Senate. There's a delegate, um, she currently is uh, Eleanor Holmes Norton, but as a delegate, she can be on committees in the House and can vote on amendments, but she does not actually vote on the final passage of legislation. So DC is a federal district, it's not a state, uh, there's a lot that is controlled by the, uh, the state, or there's a lot that is controlled by Congress and not by D.C. You, in D.C., you can vote for mayor. Uh, you can vote for council members. And D.C. does have some autonomy on its own. It does have its own services. So when there are uh, federal government shutdown, D.C. services like sanitation, thankfully, still run. Uh, D.C. essential services still run. But uh, you would have, say, the federal parks would be closed or uh, maybe museums if the Smithsonian it's closed. Uh, they have done a good job with that lately, though, having the reserves when the government has shut down that they have it in their budget to stay open. So um, it's not really a, a thing anymore that impacts D.C. residents, but it's something to be aware of. All right, the next con on our list, and it kind of goes hand in hand with jobs, is D.C. is a transient area. A lot of people come here to D.C. to build a resume, right? They're with big tech, federal government. They're in a political job as part of a campaign or something like that. They're going to be here you know, for a few years and go. So some of the, uh, you know, your neighbors, they might not be your neighbor for 25 years. If you grew up in the Midwest or the South and you are used to everyone being on your block your entire life, that will not be the case here. You know, it'll, there'll be some people for sure, but the, it is, it is not the norm for everyone to be here for decades. So if your kid has a friend in school, just be prepared. They might not be there when they graduate high school. 
Um, it's still nice. There's a lot of a lot of culture with it, but uh, just know that people come and go here. And the biggest con, which you're probably waiting for, is expensive. BC is expensive. There's no way around it. Um, real estate, you know, the single family homes here, the median price was over $650,000, where the national average this last quarter, according to the Fed, was about 413000 Now, are there some houses that cost more? Absolutely. You can spend millions and millions in houses here. Are there some neighborhoods where you can spend less money? Yes, absolutely. There's certainly affordability in different neighborhoods and different pockets if you want. Uh, for you know fixer uppers versus something that is totally done versus new construction versus buying land and building there's certainly different ways that you can afford your way into dc where you're comfortable but it's still expensive no matter what you do uh, food and gas still expensive compared to the rest of the country if you're coming from new york or seattle you might not see it as as a as a big hit versus say if you're coming from the south where um, housing and food cost a lot less than here but it is expensive that's not going to change even with inflation. If inflation goes down, it's still going to be expensive compared to the rest of the country. Hopefully you earn more money while you're here, but um, it it is what it is when it comes to cost. Um, and you can be, you know, you can be smart about what you're doing, but it's, it's going to be a hit on your pocket. If you are looking to move to the DC area, feel free to shoot us a text, give us a call, send us an email, schedule a Zoom, whatever, whatever your preference is to get that conversation started. And we'd love to help you out. All right, well, let me know what you think in the comments below about this list and whether or not there's anything that you think I missed or you wanted to talk about more in a future video. If you did find value in this video, please help us out. Hit the subscribe and like button. It uh, helps us with the YouTube algorithm reach more people just like you. Take care.